Hello everyone. Today I wanted to talk about the solemnity of the holiday that we're experiencing. And I didn't want you to think that in order to celebrate, we need to go to rallies. Our journey is not complete until our gay brothers and sisters are treated like anyone else under the law. Or marches or anything of that sort. We tell them the stories, they read about the history, but for them to actually be here and to see the bridge and to talk to these incredible heroes who helped make possible their lives, what a treat that was. But really, the idea is just to stop, take a moment out of the day that you're not at school, not at work, and think about the man, Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., and all the great things that he's done. Yes, I have some articles for us to talk about, but I also have a clip from a speech that the Reverend gave on April 4th, 1967. You might notice that that date is a little different from the date that we've all pretty much memorized, August 28th, 1963. But not just social studies, which most people would think that today is all about. I also have some vocabulary as well as a book that I'm reading for a student now that I think ties in with the theme of today so greatly about equality and equal rights and all around humanity that I just have to share. So let's get started with that first clip. Does anybody know what speech it is? Raise your hand if you do. Shout it out if you do. I come to this magnificent house of worship tonight because my conscience leaves me no other choice my own government, for the sake of the hundreds of thousands trembling under our violence, I cannot be silent. For those who ask the question, aren't you a civil rights leader, and thereby mean to exclude me from the movement for peace, I have this further answer. In 1957, when a group of us formed the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, we chose as our motto to save the soul of America. We were convinced that we could not limit our vision to certain rights for black people, but instead affirmed the conviction that America would never be free or saved from itself until the descendants of its slaves were loose completely from the shackles they still wear. In a way, we were agreeing with Langston Hughes, that black bard of Harlem, who had written earlier, oh yes, I say it plain, America never was America to me, and yet I swear this oath, America will be. Now it should be incandescently clear that no one who has any concern for the integrity and life of America today can ignore the present war. If America's soul becomes totally poisoned, part of the autopsy must read Vietnam. Obviously, that wasn't the whole speech. The reverend liked to have elongated rhetoric to use hyperbole and metaphor and gut-wrenching sensationalism in order to get to his fellow human beings and make his points heard. If you want to see the full 50 minute speech. There's a bunch of videos on there, YouTube, everywhere. If you want 
a write out of the speech itself, you can go to this really great website, AmericanRhetoric.com slash speeches slash MLK, a time to break silence .htm. This speech was so great that I had so much to choose from, but I actually chose to stop the video clip at a quote that was used in this first article. For King, one cause cost allies. And the quote about America being dead and having the autopsy read Vietnam, you can kind of see a connection between that idea and let's say changing the word Vietnam to one of today's vices, either Russia or President-elect Donald Trump. And the reason that I mention President-elect Trump is because later on in the article, as well as earlier in the speech, there's a issue about the war being a poor man's war and how the American people used the poor black men who were just trying to get on their feet as cannon fodder for the war in Vietnam. The article reads, from a thing-oriented society to a person-oriented society. We don't want to see our children, our minorities as things, but as fellow human beings that have rights and needs. And another quote from King, when machines and computers, profit motives, and property rights are considered more important than people, the giant triplets of racism, extreme materialism, and militarism are incapable of being conquered. Now, I think that that is so uniquely geared to today that I can't think of a comeback. My father once taught me, many times taught me, that if we don't remember our past, we are doomed to repeat it. And on April 4th this year, it will be 50 years since this speech originated. I didn't want to spend too much time on this three editorial article from yesterday's paper, appreciating two history changing leaders, because I basically already connected a bunch of the things that connect President Barack Obama and the late great Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., not just the color of their skin but also the fights that they were making. In the clip of the speech that I shared with you, the Reverend explained how he wasn't just for black rights. He was for America and the American spirit and equality of all shapes and sizes. In the last eight years, President Obama has fought for these type of rights not necessarily African-American rights, though we have had some issues of police brutality and that sort of thing. But he's also fought for those who need equality in the LGBTQ community. So we have marriage legalized for homosexuality. We have fought against separate segregating bathrooms for transgender people. We have worked at stemming the divide between the haves and the have-nots for equal opportunity to health care, provided that president-elect doesn't reverse these decisions. These are great strides in our country and our country's spirit. And I hope that we continue this as we move forward.
So we do have a ticking clock on our hand. In this video, I have talked about equal rights for various people. In previous videos, I have talked about equal rights for those in our education system, those with special needs for learning disabilities and behavioral disabilities. What I tend to agree with this syndicated writer, Mary Sanchez, is that it's not fair to put on Obama's shoulders that there wasn't an immediate change in our society when it comes to various divides. That's impossible, even over an eight year span, to expect that we're just going to change the world. Little changes and big changes have been made. Like when we landed on the moon, that was one small step for man and one giant leap for mankind. We've made a lot of small steps we've made a couple giant leaps, but now we need to step back and appreciate all the work that went towards that. And we need to look at the future and see why in this article, Obama moved countries race relations forward by Mary Sanchez, that there are still African Americans being blamed for hate crimes against mentally disabled people. Have they done it? Possibly. Have other white people done it? Possibly. Have other races done it? What does it matter? The fact is a crime was committed. It could have been a hate crime against the disabled. It could just be that a disabled person was there and readily available to these hateful people. What are we going to do about it? How are we going to change our society? These are questions you need to ask yourself and see what we can do in the legislature and in our own daily actions in order to stop this hate and bring in the love that Dr. King always wanted us to have for each other. Representative John Lewis a Democrat from Georgia talked about his personal history with the struggle of racial equality and being beaten almost to death for his beliefs in equality. Trump decided to take the opportunity to use his Twitter account to state some very egregious things about our representative John Lewis. And I quote, Congressman John Lewis should spend more time on fixing and helping his district, which is in horrible shape and falling apart, not to mention crime infested, rather than falsely complaining about the election results. All talk, talk, talk. No action or results. Sad. Really? We're going to play that game. Yes, I do agree that the representative, John Lewis, should probably not have said that he thinks that Russia was responsible for aiding in the president-elect's campaign and possibly being the ones who have leaked things from Hillary Clinton. We know that Hillary leaked things with her email scandal. We know this to be true. We know that Russia has come forth recently claiming that they have things against Trump. Maybe this is a ploy, maybe they're working together, but these are just maybes. We should not go based on maybes. They shouldn't be in a public forum like, oh, YouTube. But for Trump to use his Twitter account so willingly is to say that what's him stopping him from using it on 
classified information, which he claims Hillary doesn't know how to keep. I want to thank one of my tutoring students because they are reading, and it's forcing me to read, The Hope Chest by Karen Schwabach. And this book is such a great resource for this topic that we're talking about, equality and equal rights, for so many reasons. As you can see on the cover, this little African-American girl, her name is Myrtle, and she's having trouble finding places to stay, finding things to do and be because of her race. And her mama did not want her growing up to be somebody's servant. The main character, Violet, didn't want to follow her parents' wishes, going to school and being a good girl and taking care of house and home. Her older sister, Chloe, definitely didn't want those and definitely didn't want to marry a Mr. So-and-so and be a good wife and take care of children at home. So she decided to move out on her own and use the money that was meant for her hope chest, which is a metaphor in the book. So if you remember what metaphor is, shout it out now. And she wanted to fight for women's suffrage. Suffrage being the right to vote and various other things that women did not have in the 1920s. The right to work. The male main character, Mr. Martin, was fighting another battle. He had to stay hidden during all of this because he had already been in trouble with the law for fighting against World War I and child labor laws back when he was 12 years old. All of these things add up to great topics for conversation and great things to remember Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. I hope that you pick up the book, Hope Chest, and read it with me. I'm on page 178 of 200 and I think 72, 274 pages. So tell me what you think about this book and how are you celebrating Martin Luther King Jr. Day? Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you click that subscribe button and subscribe for more.